anything, God has specific thing he wants to do. There is a specific thing God wants to do tonight. And you must receive from you must receive that thing God wants to do. You want to pray. Lord, the purpose of this Bible study tonight shall be achieved in my life. I shall receive in full what you have for us tonight. What you have for us tonight. I as a person, I shall receive in full what you have for us. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. I want you to be serious with that prayer. Because there is a huge blessing in a place like this. There is huge blessing in Bible study. That is why the devil is stopping so many believers from going to Bible study. They rather go to a place of prophecy than a place of Bible study. Oh Lord, I pray the purpose of tonight's Bible study shall be actualized in my life. Lord, the purpose of tonight's Bible study shall manifest in my life. Some 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 manifest in my life. In the name of Jesus, the purpose of tonight's Bible study shall be actualized in my life. The purpose will come to manifestation. Shall come to manifestation. Shall come to manifestation. I shall receive in full. The blessing you have for us tonight in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. You want to pray for the servant of God, Lord, make him flame of fire, make him flame of fire, make him flame of fire that would deliver the whole counsel of God tonight. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, make your servant a flame of fire. I will deliver the whole counsel of God for us tonight. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you happy to be here today? If you are happy, shout it louder. Hallelujah. I want us to pray a single prayer. Lord, do a new thing in my life before I leave this place today. Open your mouth and pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, do a new thing in my life today. Lord, I don't want my life to remain the same. Let there be a divine turning around in my life. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Pray that prayer in the spirit. Pray it in the spirit. The Lord is listening to you. Open your mouth and pray. Father, turn my life around today in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I don't want my life to remain the same. Let the word of God today be a blessing to my life, be a blessing to my soul. In the name of Jesus, open your mouth and pray that prayer. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. The Lord is listening to you. Open your mouth. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. The Lord is listening to you. Open your mouth and pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, let your word be a blessing to my life. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Almighty God, we bless you. We thank you for giving us the grace to be here. Thank you. We appreciate you. Lord, we say be thou exalted in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that today you will turn our life around for good. And through this teaching, you will build us. And you will make us more than conquerors. Thank you, Lord, because you have done it. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Shout hallelujah. Somebody is not shouting hallelujah very well. God bless you. You can be seated. First, I sincerely apologize for coming 
a little bit uh, you know late to give us the word of God it is because we were having issue with our live transmission I want us to listen to this message in the spirit so that this can be a blessing to our life. I want you to tell the person beside you, my life will be blessed today. Can you say it again? Say it to the person again. Somebody is not talking. Speak louder. I want us to pray this one prayer. Father, build my faith today and make me more than conquerors. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, build my faith today and make me more than conquerors. Give me victory over my worries and fear. Open your mouth and pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Today, we are talking about exercising your authority. What are we talking about? Exercising your authority. Our test is taken from the book of Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpent and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. I want us to look at that place again. And I want us to read it with understanding. I want us to read it with focus. And I want us to read it in the spirit. Are you there? Let's read it again. One to go. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpent and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Praise the Lord. If there is ever a time that a believer must exercise his authority in Christ, it is now. When of darkness is being glorified here and there, why believers that carry the highest power and authority live in fear. Until you understand who you are, you can't live where you are. I want you to listen. It will not be good if you allow yourself to be distracted. Until you understand who you are you can't live where you are 
until you understand who you are you can't overcome some power that are terrorizing you until you understand who you are you can't overcome some challenges that is confronting you this is why one of the greatest agenda of the devil is to keep away from you understanding who you are are you listening to me I cannot hear you this should be a very uh, practical class I want it to be an engaging one so if I ask you to talk you talk <laughs> if I ask you to speak you speak hallelujah Until you understand who you are, you may not experience the next shift in your life. Praise the Lord. And this is why when I gave my life to Jesus, one of the things I labored I'm prayed for. I want to know myself. There are a lot of people that are going to church. They carry Bible, but they don't know what they have. Do you hear what I say? And the devil love it. When you are just a church goer, you just go to church. When you are just a bench woman, the devil love it because such Christians are totally in the hands of the devil. So until you understand who you are, now look at what Jesus said in this place. He said, "Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpent and scorpion." When, when the Bible talks about serpent and scorpions, it's not talking about the literal serpent and No. It's referring to wicked powers. It's referring to the powers of the enemy. It's referring to principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in high places. In fact, the Bible says, Rest not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power. Hallelujah. So when he say, I give you power to train on serpent and scorpion. He didn't say to run away. But he said, the power I give unto you is to tread on. And one of the parts I love most, he said, and nothing shall by any means. shall by any means hurt you. Do you understand? Hallelujah. Do you understand? I said, do you understand? Then we need to ask ourselves, where is my authority? Why am I weak? Why am I afraid of the enemy? Why is the enemy terrorizing me? When the Bible says, nothing shall by any means hurt you. And yet they come in your dream, they brought demonic food and you ate it. Then after eating it, begin to see some reaction in your life. Why? Why is it that you will sleep? Some demonic power will come and press you down. And there is nothing to scare them away. And that's the reason why we are here. You see, let me tell you something. I gave my life to Jesus. It was a wonderful experience. But after some time, 
started having some strange experience. Very strange one. Very, very strange one. Then I discover later that you can pray a lot and yet you don't really understand who you are. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Eh? Please, I, I, don't want your, I don't want you to be distracting yourself. I want you to listen to the word of God. There is a possibility to pray, to be praying a lot. To be very prayerful. That you jump to different mountains where they are praying. You just want to be there. But meanwhile, you don't even understand who you are. And the devil love it when we are ignorant of who we are. Because you see, when you pray in the strength of the law, in the understanding of who you are, there is an authority that follow it. But when you pray with ignorance, you don't even know the God you are praying to. You don't know how powerful he is. They are just praying. I'm praying. After all, prayer, then you see that. Even though you pray so violent, then they still come and attack you. <laughs> How many of you have prayed very, very, very violent before? And after that same prayer, you will attack. <laughs> Praise the Lord. The one I will not forget is when I went, I was at a mountain to pray. And when, when I say I should sleep before the VG, they still come and press me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. When you don't understand who you are, when you are ignorant of who you are, the devil will, will attack you based on your ignorance. Praise the Lord. But one day, I came to understand that I am in Christ. And he that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. So why is this thing harassing me? This cannot be my experience again. That's why I'm speaking to the life of somebody there. Whatever that is harassing you, end today. Yeah. I thought your email would be louder. Yeah. Exercising your authority. Before you can exercise authority, you must know who you are. And you must know what you have. If you don't understand who you are, and what you have. You can't exercise any authority. You know, there are some wayward and wayward students when they have given them ring, a sham has been invoking to the you know, demonic power had been invoking to the ring. They will start to misbehave. Yes. They will start to misbehave. Because they will be looking for somebody to hit with that ring in their hands. Because they, at that time, they understand who they are and what they have. So with this thing in my hands, I'm very... I just want somebody to look for my trouble. When you have something that is precious than gold. Something precious more than silver. And yet you don't even know the worth of it. Certain situations that ought not to embarrass you will embarrass you. Hallelujah. 
to exercise your authority it is to walk in your identity to operate in your identity hallelujah to operate in your identity but the reason why many people could not manifest their authority number one is that many have lost their passion you don't have passion for the things of God passion for the things of God and there is a loss of passion for the things of God this will limit the strength and power of your authority you will speak you will authorize but it won't work there's not going to be any manifestation because you have lost passion some have lost their zeal for God zeal for the things of God zeal for things that glorify God they have lost zeal for it some have lost their fervency yes and so because they have lost their fervency when they give an authority when they, when they command the situation the situation will become worse. It will become worse. Because there is no backup. They have no backup. Of God. So there is a possibility to be plain uh, Christian. Because you go to church or because you are a worker in your church. When your prayer and your command is just an empty word. It doesn't move. It doesn't move any power. Yes, there is no backup. There is no heavenly backup. You just command. You just command. It doesn't work because you have lost authority. So some have lost fire on their altar. Yes, they have lost fire on their altar. The fire of God is no longer burning on their altar. And so when the fire of God on your altar is dead, there is no way you can exercise any authority. Another one is that some, they have lost their hunger for things from above. Yes. And when there is no hunger for things from above, Certainly, there is going to be a hunger for the things of the earth. So, when your hunger for things from above is dead, and now you have lost connection with God, you can now you can now command. You command mountains; the mountain will become bigger. Yes. If you remember the uh, the case of the. Seven sons of the of the scribe. They were casting out demons. Said in the name of Jesus, in whom Paul preached, come out. <laughs> and uh, the the demon they told them and said, we know Paul and we know Jesus. Then who are you? They don't know what to do. And the Bible said they were stripped naked. Hallelujah. When you have lost hunger for things from above, this will limit your authority. When you give a word, I command in the name of Jesus. Nothing will happen. So when you have lost hunger for purity, You become so careless with your tongue. You become a troublemaker. You don't follow peace with all men. You live anyhow. When there is no hunger for purity, I will begin to live anyhow. 
This will affect our authority. So when we say we want to exercise that authority, there won't be any manifestation. Hallelujah. When our task after righteousness is quenched, we will fail in a place of authority. When our tasking after righteousness is quenched, we will fail in a place of authority. A man had a dream. In that dream, he saw some strangers in his house. In fact, they sat in his sitting room. He went to them. He said, what are you doing in this place? Who invites you to this place? Say you are the one that invited us. So why did I do that? Leave my house. Leave my house. I command you to leave my house. He said we cannot leave. You are the one that invite us. So we are here to stay. So how did I invite you? And they told him certain things that he did. Hallelujah. That opened doors. So when our testing after righteousness is quenched, our authority will be limited. It will affect our authority. It will have terrible effect on our authority. When we exercise any authority, it won't work. This is why there are many, many people in a place of prayers. Only few people can say this is what God has done. Because one million people may be in a place of prayer. It may be that it is only just a few thousand that have the authority. I'm praying for you today. The power, the grace to maintain your task after righteousness, hunger after righteousness, receive the grace in the mighty name of Jesus. When our commitment to a crucified life is dead, We will fail in a place of authority. What does it mean to live a crucified life? It is when, when you don't use members of your body as an instrument of unrighteousness. So when commitment to live a crucified life is dead, there is going to be a failure in a place of authority. Hallelujah. When our hatred for sin is shallow. Yes, our hatred for sin. Before you hate sin, you hate sin. <laughs> you hate sin. But now, that hatred is dead. What you hate, you are now loving it. This will affect your authority. If you exercise authority, it won't work. Are you listening to what I'm saying? Eh? When you start to love sin, and you begin to say, ah, it's true, it makes sense. Too. What does not make sense to you before? That you consider it as something grievous, something terrible. But now you begin to say that, oh, it's like this thing makes sense. Hallelujah. It's a sign that something is happening to your Christian life. And when such a thing is happening, you should know that you won't be able to exercise any authority. And, and see, when every members of the church, when if every members of the church are connected to Christ, truly connected to Christ, I'm telling you, pastor will not, will not have much work. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Some certain cases that people will bring, 
Sometimes it's it's funny. But it is because you are yet to understand who we are. Pastor, yesterday, when I was sleeping, I hear some people walking on my ceiling. I was like, bing, 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 bing. Where I was sleeping, I was just shaking, shaking, shaking. I, I cannot even move my body on the bed. Please, Pastor, pray. When such a thing happens, instead of you to exercise your authority, if it is not right, if it is not right, if it is not right, Hallelujah. So what am I trying to say? If every believer in the church understand who they are, I'm telling you, we won't have much work. Those who patronize uh, 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 house of false prophet, they won't do that. It's because you don't understand who you are. I pray that today there is going to be revelation. Somebody is not saying amen. So the first thing we must understand is that before we can understand who we are and exercise our authority, there must be revelation. There must be what? What did I say? There must be what? There must be revelation. I want you to pray this one prayer. You will call on the name of the Lord. Father, today, open my eyes. Open my eyes. Give me revelation. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Father, today, give me revelation. Open your mouth. Pray that prayer in the spirit. Give me revelation. Revelation that will make me a powerful Christian. Revelation that will make me a strong Christian. Father, please let me have it today. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Open your mouth and pray that prayer. Lord, give me a revelation. Revelation that will make me a strong Christian. That will make me a Christian that will walk in authority and power. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth, pray in the spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. What am I trying to say? Before you can walk in authority, you must first receive revelation of who you are. So until revelation comes, you may not know who is standing for you. Yes. And that is what I really want to deal with it with, with this aspect. When revelation come about the persons of Jesus, I know you have been going to church until revelation come about how powerful Jesus is. And I'm not talking about revelation of dream. No. No. When the Holy Spirit give you revelation of who Jesus is, I'm telling you, your life will change. How you handle life situation will change. The way you approach situations of life will change. 
until revelation come you may not know who is standing for you until revelation come you may not even know who you are hallelujah now I want you to look at the case of when uh, <laughs> Goliath was terrorizing the Israelites for good 40 days 40 days hallelujah good 40 days and King Saul and others who were there they have fought many war but that situation caged them they were terrorized they were afraid and thank God for the life of David so when you understand who you are you will look at Satan like a toothless lion that doesn't mean that he doesn't have power it does but when you compare it for the power and authority of God his power is nothing his power is what? yes Goliath was insulted that the Israelite will send a man shepherd boy against him how can you send a shepherd boy to come and confront me someone who have never fought any war is the one you are now sending to me what an insult, what an embarrassment David didn't compare himself with Goliath but he compared Goliath with God yes, with God hallelujah so when we are just making an empty boast when our boast is it is not of God it's not rooted in God you will expose yourself to what will destroy you I told you <laughs> of, of a pastor maybe he wanted to prove a point he saw a sacrifice and ate it and I know maybe he want to tell his congregation or maybe some some folks that you see I have anointing I have power I saw sacrifice and I ate it he ate the sacrifice and started vomiting blood that's nonsense because God the Lord said you will trend on a serpent and scorpion does not mean that you should you should you should test God oh hallelujah so, until revelation come revelation of who you are and revelation of, of who is standing for you who is who you have in your life until that revelation come you will continue to walk in fear you will continue to live in fear let's share the book of second king chapter 6 15 to 17 second king please second king chapter 6 15 15 to 17 hallelujah let's see what the bible say in that place second king chapter 6 The Bible says in verse 15 and when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold a horse compassed the city boat with horses and chariots and his servant said unto him alas my master how shall we do <laughs> you see what you see that situation in that place Look at your Bible and read it. Are you there? Are you with your Bible? Why? Why was he? Why was why why is that he was afraid? Look at 
soldiers. Look at horses and chariots. They have come against us. What are we going to do, master? Verse 16. Are you there? Please, there is it. Want to go? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Now, his servant, before verse 16, did he see anything? Eh? What was he seeing? He was only seeing those that came against him. Meanwhile, spiritually, those that are with them are more powerful, are much more than those who came against them. How many of you know that you have a guide there, angel? If at all you have not chased him away with impurity, <laughs> do you know you have a guide there, angel? Eh? I've told you of a student who shared an experience. They have a motor crash, and the small girl inside the motor, something carry the baby. And sit her down under a tree. Yes, something carry her out of that vehicle and sat her down under a tree. Just within that few minutes. So you have a guy there, angel. I remember a day God opened my eyes and I saw a sister and I saw angels of God that were moving with her. Some are the front, some are the back. The reason why we live in fear is because most of the time we are blind. We are not sensitive to the things of the spirit. And the devil loves it. And that is why the devil will keep terrorizing us. When the servant of this man of God, when he saw those who came, he was afraid. And what did he say? How shall we do? How shall we do? And verse 16, and he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And verse 17, let's read it. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man and he saw and behold the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. Look at it. Who was the servant of Elisha? Eh? Eh? Oh, I can't hear you now. Gehazi. You see, how can Gehazi see when he is a gluten? When his way is not perfect with God. How can he see? Hallelujah. The Lord opened his eyes. When his, when his master prayed for him. And he saw the mountain. Full of horses. Ha! Hallelujah. Say, I am not alone. Somebody is not talking. What shall we do? He answered and said, Fear not. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man. And he saw, behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire. Ready to fight. Hallelujah. Revelation that the servant of the man of God, God buried 
his fear. There is a level of revelation that will put boldness, strong boldness in you. There is a level of revelation that will make you radical. It is this revelation that will create divine awareness and consciousness of who you are in Christ. When he saw, when God opened his eyes, then he was no longer moved by those, I, I say, by the presence of those who came against them. It is because you are not seeing what God wants you to see. That's why you're living in fear. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Somebody is not shouting hallelujah. Revelation. Everybody shout revelation. Shout it again. Shout it louder. Shout it bigger. Let your voice be higher. Yes. When God opened his eyes, something changed. It was no longer the same. He was not look, looking at the situation the same way. He was not terrified by the presence of those who came against them. But rather, he was bold. What is it that is blocking your eyes? What is it that is that that is hindering the manifestation of your authority it was this revelation that peter got that made him to walk on the water you know what peter said he said if it is you command me to come all that didn't say that yeah he didn't say that Say, if it is you, if truly you are the one, command me to come. And Jesus said, come. I'm praying for somebody here. May the Lord give you victory over fear. Somebody is not saying amen. A louder amen. Yes. Victory over fear. For the first time, his analysis about water change. Hey, you want to step out of the boat. You know what will happen? You will sink. No. Who asked me to come? It's not man that asked me to come. He stepped out of the boat. And the rock of ages appear under his leg. The second leg came out. Hey! And he was walking until he was distracted by the wind. Hallelujah. Don't let anything distract you. Don't let anything change the understanding about who you are. Don't let any situation take away the identity you have discovered about yourself. It got the revelation. I can do all things through Christ. It came out from the boat. I started walking on the water. Revelation would make you to step out of the boat of blindness. It will make you to step out from the boat of fear. It will make you to step out from the boat of self-made limitations. I can't succeed. People doesn't make it. In the family I came from, nobody succeed. No, no. It happened to other. That doesn't mean it can happen to you. It cannot happen to you. Hallelujah. 
Somebody is not shouting hallelujah. So you can't exercise what you don't know you have. Because when you know it, it will put your spirit in a position that will generate a productive action in the course of life. I say, when you have understand who you are, that is when you can confront your situation, confront your mountain with boldness. I say, there is this faith you have, there is this assurance you have not just being a church goer or being a bench woman or being just a carrier of a Bible. No! But this time around, you know who asks you to speak, in whose strength you are speaking, in whose strength you are standing. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! So when you don't know who you are, you can't exercise your authority. I'm sent today to touch and to wake the giant that authority of God in you. Some believer they thought that spiritual authority belongs to only a few chosen people to whom God has given special power. It is not so. No. Spiritual authority belongs to all the children of God. And I know that today, before we leave, we will receive it. Somebody is not saying amen. When we are adopted into the family of Christ, when we are made a new creature in Jesus Christ, we inherit the name of Jesus and we can use our spiritual authority against the enemy which is the devil. So the devil does not want you to learn about this authority. So he wants you to be ignorant of it. Hallelujah. He, won't, he, has, he doesn't want you to know. He doesn't want you to be aware of it. That I am meant to be tormented, afflicted, limited, frustrated. No. Devil wants you to have that kind of ideology. He wants you to continue in defeat. That's why I'm speaking to the life of somebody here. As you discover who you are today any power that, that you are always afraid of, they will be afraid of you. I said they will be afraid of you. I said they will be afraid of you. There was a case of a woman who was very devoted in the house of God. Then her only son was very sick to the point, to the point of death. So the point of death. So the woman was very angry in her soul. With holy anger boiling in her heart. So she, she brought the girl to the house of God and dropped her before the altar and said, I drop you, Dr. Jesus. I will come back and, and see you healed. And she went out. I'm not saying you should do the same thing. Yes. I listen to me. Christian like copy copy, and that's the reason why you, you don't see results. That is our own faith. She believes. So if you go and copy the same thing, you may come back and just see your daughter. <laughs> Where is the Lord? Yes. You don't know the level of faith that make her to make such decision. So she dropped her and went out and came back. The girl was playing around in the church. Yes. Authority. Authority. 
Everybody say authority. Say it again. Speak louder. Say, I will walk in authority. So spiritual authority belongs to us. Whether we realize it or not. But just knowing is not enough. It is knowledge that is acted upon that will bring about results. We must exercise it. Say, I will exercise it. Say, say it again. Yes. Because there is possible for you to know something. Okay, I have power. I have authority. If you don't act upon it, you won't see manifestation. So, all that the enemy have stolen from you, you have the authority to claim them back. Yes. We have the authority to take it back. Say, I will take it back. Say it louder. So, how do we exercise it? We tell Satan to give you back whatever he has taken from you. Give me back my children. Give me back my marriage. Give me back my stony finances. Give me back my health. You don't tell him with fear. You tell him with boldness. With boldness. With boldness. As in, you don't speak with fear. You don't say, please give me back. No, you don't tell, you don't beg the devil. You exercise authority. Give me back my health. Give me back my joy. Give me back my peace. Give me back my love. Give me back my compassion and spirit. You don't say, please, I beg you, give me back. No, you don't beg the devil. You don't beg the enemy. They are to bow before you. The Bible says, the stranger will submit themselves unto you. The Bible says, as soon as they hear of you, they will obey. Yes, they will fade away out of their close places. That is, wherever they may be hiding, when you exercise your authority, now I have discovered who I am, who is in me, who I am connected to, who is my backup, who redeemed me by his precious blood. Therefore, I reclaim back my job. I reclaim back my authority, my connection, my property. Yes, there's going to be manifestation. But when the enemy touch you and you are crying, enemy touch your marriage, you are crying. They touch your finances, you are crying. Yes, that is what they want. They want you to cry. They want you to be in sorrow. But until you rise up in the strength of the Lord and say enough is enough. The one you have done is enough. The marriage you have touched is enough. My son you have touched is enough. My daughter you have touched is enough. My job you have touched is enough. My finances you have touched is enough. I claim them back. That is when the enemy will know. Hey, he has changed you. He is no longer the fearing type. Say, I will take it back. Say it again. Somebody is not shouting. The source of our authority is in the resurrection power of Christ. If Christ didn't resurrect it, we can't boast of any power. We can't boast of any authority. Yes. The source of our authority is in the resurrection power of Christ and can only be asserted through his lordship in our life. If he has not become the lord of your life, if you are still the love of your own life, you have not allowed the Lord Jesus to be the Lord of your life, the Lord of your mouth, the Lord of your choice, the Lord of your decision, the Lord of your character. You are still misbehaving. I am the owner of my life. I can do what I like. I can say what I like with my mouth. I can go anywhere I like. I can behave anyhow. I am the owner. When you are 
has he seen yourself as the owner and you don't allow him to have the lordship in your life you can't walk in authority it's impossible hallelujah that's why you will speak in tongue and they will still come and torment you yes in the book of Hebrew 2 verse 14 Hebrew chapter 2 verse 14 let's read it Hebrew chapter 2 verse 14 the Bible says in verse 14 For as much then as the children are partaker of the flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil. Hallelujah. See what the Bible says in that place. You have something great. And that is in Christ. So if he has not become the Lord of your life, you can't exercise authority. And that is where many are missing it. The Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. He will flee. When your own obedience in Christ is full. If you are a disobedient child, disobedient daughter, one child to God. Whatever he tells you, don't do. You disobey. You can't see. You can't. You can't expect the powers of the enemy to obey you when you don't obey God. That is a secret. That's a secret. <laughs> Hallelujah. Last week, last week Bible study, I told you that when you get home, we were we were teaching about marriage. And I gave you assignments. I say, when you get home, wife, hug your hus- hug your husband. When your husband return back from his place of work, husband, when you get home, hug your wife. Some say, eh, hey, ten years ago, fifteen years ago, that's the last time. How many of you practice what I told you when you get home? How many of you, daddy? Is it true? Eh? How many? How many of you practice it? Just how many? I cannot see your hand very well. Just one person. You see, that's what I'm saying. Yes. See, let me tell you something. Many marriages are crashing. Don't add your own to the list. What did I say? You can make your marriage work. There should not be anything like old old school. Uh, is Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So disobedience. If our obedience is not full. I command you to leave. The demon will said, you, are, you two are a disobedient child. So I have the right to disobey your authority because you are a disobedient child. If our obedience to Christ is not full, <laughs> you are giving authority to the powers of the enemy. They have the right to disobey you. Hallelujah. Somebody is not saying hallelujah. How can we exercise our authority? Number one, be bold to say no. Be bold to say what? To say no. Oh, somebody is don't ever manage stronghold of the enemy in your life. Be honest. Whatever struggle that want to confront you, don't run away from it. Face it for once and finish it. Yes. 
be bold to say no. Don't manage the stronghold of the enemy in your life. Be bold to say what? Eh? Somebody is not talking. Be bold to say no. This is not for me. This is not my portion. This is not the portion of my children. This is not the portion of my wife. This is not the portion of my husband. You must be bold to say no. This cannot happen in my home. This cannot happen in my life. Because if you don't say no to some certain things, the enemy, the enemy will, will build a nest on your head. Yes. When they see they do the first one, we we'll keep quiet. Wow. We love this life. We, we love someone like this. They do the second one. You keep quiet. <laughs> uh, somebody came from a family. They were dying one after the other. They were dying. <laughs> he didn't say anything. Say me. Mm -hmm. He won't pray. And that is that is foolishness. When you say, ah, ah, no, 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 it can't happen to me, and yet you don't exercise authority. <laughs> you keep quiet. <laughs> okay. Until when you begin to sense that it's like I'm the next person. <laughs> then he changed his prayer. I shall not die. I shall not die. It's not my portion. And glory be to God. That evil trend of untimely death. Stop. It stop. When you don't say no. The enemy. They will continue from where they have stopped before. So you must be diligent. You must exercise your authority over the enemy. By saying No. You cannot operate in my life. Get out. You cannot operate in my business. Get out. Get out from my life. Hallelujah. Number two. Speak the word. Speak what? Huh? Speak the word. Jesus responded to every of the schemes of the devil by saying it is written. That we can see in Matthew chapter 4. It is written. It is written. So the word is a weapon of warfare. That is the truth. It is a life. And it is, it is final. Yes. We must use the scripture to pray. Praise God. And declare truth. Because when you know the word of God. It makes your authority. Exercising your authority to be effective. Because you have to rely on the written word. Yes. I have the right. To say this. Because it is written. Do you understand? It is written. The word of God is powerful. Number three. Consistent abiding in Christ. Consistent abiding in Christ. John chapter 15 verse 4. John 15. Verse 4. John 15 verse 4. Abide in me and I in you. As a branch cannot bear fruit of itself except it abide in the vine. No more can ye except ye abide in me. That place is simply saying you are useless if you don't abide in me. So I say consistent abiding. 
it is not that you are you abide this last week this week you are no longer abiding no consistent it must be consistent all the time all the time you abide in him all the time consistent abiding hallelujah consistent what consistent abiding say if you abide in me and my word abide in you number four be real and truthful be real and be truthful <laughs> you see when you are not real you are the one that is deceiving yourself there are a lot of people in the church that are not real some are members of a choir of the choir but they are they, they are still low show true of us eh? it's true they are members of the choir but they are prostitutes but nobody knows in the church they sing very well they have a very nice voice after church they are something else. So that's the reason why you can't, if, if the past of the enemy disgrace such a thing, what else do you expect? So you must be real. Don't just pretend. If you are pretending, you just know that no, one, you can't deceive yourself. You can't deceive the devil. And you can't deceive God. <laughs> so if you want to exercise authority, you must be real and be truthful. Don't be like this. No. If you are a hypocrite, you are fooling yourself. Hallelujah. Hypocrite is what? Fully himself. A case of a brother who was a choir master of a particular church doesn't want to go to church that day because he has a plan to bring a girl to the house. So he called the church. Uh, Pastor, I won't be able to come. I'm, I'm very sick. Please pray for me. And they prayed for him. Ah, every this and that. You are healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Don't worry. After the, after the service, we will come and we will come and check on you. I said, ah, it will be late. Don't bother to come. Don't bother to come. Uh, if I sleep and wake up, <laughs> I, I will be all right. We will see you on Sunday. Ah, and the pastor, sorry, you. please make sure you do this. You say, yeah, 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 yes, sir, yes, sir. And he has a plan. Who is he deceiving? Mm -hmm. Eh? Mm -hmm. Eh? The guy he carried, mm -hmm. the guy came mm -hmm. with very terrible infection. Mm -hmm. Terrible infection. Mm -hmm. And has vowed that she will be distributing it to as many as possible. Yes. The brother thought he was smart by pretending to be sick. Of course, you know, he did everything he wanted to do. Then the repercussion came. The real sickness came as a result of the infection. He got to a point he could no longer hide. Because they said this thing came from intercourse. Where did you got it? Ah, you have to open up. Oh. Then he opened up. He said, when did that happen? He said, that day when I told you I was sick. I was not sick. 
was a plan. So when you think you are smart, you can't be smarter than the devil. And you can't be smarter than God. So most of the time, the de- God is trying to save you from danger. But you yourself, you take a digger and you are digging your own grave. May the Lord open your eyes. So be real and truthful. Don't be a hypocritical Christian. Number five. Don't be scared by the size and numbers of your enemy. Don't be what? Don't be scared by the size and number of the enemy. Six. Believe God's report. What is God saying? That is what I will believe. Not what man is saying. So you must believe God's report. Seven. Don't have a negative motive. Make sure that everything you do is centered on godly motive. Don't have negative motive. If you want to exercise spiritual authority, everything you do, make sure they are centered on godly motive. Number eight, don't make merchandise of it. There are people who are asking for power and authority because they want to sell it. Yes. And it is those kind of pastors that people like. When you don't charge them, they believe you don't have power. The pastor, uh, that prayer you want to do for me, so how much is the cost? Everything. It's an embarrassment to be asking such a question. Remember a church I was invited and they asked us, hey, so tell us all the food you used to eat and the, the, the kind of hotel. I said, what kind of thing is that? What kind of thing is that? I feel so embarrassed. So it's because others used to demand that. You don't make merchandise of God's grace upon your life. One day it will disappear. You won't see it again. Nine, don't fake it. Go for spiritual refreshment. Don't fake it. Go for spiritual refreshment. Ten, develop a listening ear. How many of you are listening to what I'm saying? Eh? Develop a listening ear. Listen to instruction. Listen to instruction. Listen to direction. Listen to the voice of God. And lastly, be available. Be available. If you don't make yourself available for God, for the things of God, you can't exercise spiritual authority. Don't allow anything to take your time from God, whereby you don't even have time for the things of God. Such a person won't be able to exercise his authority. I want us to be on our feet. We want to pray. Let us be on our feet. We want to pray. Hallelujah. Let somebody shout hallelujah. The first thing you are going to pray, Father, whatever I have been doing that is stopping the manifestation of my authority, Father, please forgive me. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Whatever I have been doing that is stopping the manifestation of my authority, Father, please forgive me. Open your mouth and pray. Lord, please forgive me. Whatever that is stopping the manifestation of my authority, please have mercy on me. Wash me with your precious blood. Wash me with your precious blood. Wash me with your precious blood. Open your mouth. 
pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. Lord, wash me with your precious blood. 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 Wash me, Lord. Wash me. Wash me with your precious blood. In the mighty name of Jesus, wash me, Lord, with your precious blood. Somebody pray. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit, Lord. Wash me in your precious blood. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. So I'm going to pray. Lord, I believe. I have authority. Beginning from today, I begin to walk in the authority that you have given unto me. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. I begin to walk in the authority that you have given unto me. I will not be a shallow Christian. I will not be a fearful Christian. I will not be a weak Christian. I will not be a cold Christian. I will not be a timid Christian. I will not be a powerless Christian. I shall walk in that authority that you have given unto me. I shall walk in the authority that you've given unto me. I will walk in the authority that you've given unto me in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Blessed be your name, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Can we pray for just a few minutes? Can we? All right, please, I want you to pray it very well. Just, just four prayer points. Four. Just four. And I want you to pray it very well. You will shout. By the authority of God, I take back what the enemy have stolen from me. Open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus. What the enemy have stolen from you, I take it back by the authority of God. Somebody open your mouth and pray. What the enemy have stolen from me, I take it back by the authority of God. What the enemy have stolen from my life, I take it back by the authority of God. I take it back by the authority of God. I take it back by the authority of God. I take it back by the authority of God. I take it back. 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 What the enemy has stolen from my life, from my family, I take it back. I take it back. Somebody open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth. Pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. I take it back. In Jesus' name we pray. I could hear in my spirit. There are some that need to reclaim back their children. So you are going to pray. I reclaim back. I reclaim back my son. I reclaim back my daughter. From the hands of the enemy. I reclaim back my finances. From the hands of the enemy. I reclaim back my health. From the hands of the enemy. I reclaim back my business. From the hands of the enemy. I reclaim back my job. From the hands of the enemy, I reclaim back my connection. From the hands of the enemy, I reclaim back my opportunities. From the hands of the enemy, open your mouth and pray that prayer. Open your mouth, pray in the spirit. I reclaim it back. I take it back. I take it back. I take it back. Open your mouth, pray in the spirit. Pray in the spirit. I take it back. By the authority of God, I take it back. By the authority of God, I take it back. I take it back. I take it back. I take back my children from the hands of the enemy. I take back my finances from the hands of the enemy. I take back my connection from the hands of the enemy. I take back my opportunity from the hands of the enemy. I take it back. I take it back. By the authority of God, I take it back by the authority of God. I take it back by the authority of God. I take it back. I take it back today. 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 In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Anything in my life 
that the enemy has manipulated receive divine solution open your mouth and pray that prayer anything in my life that the enemy has manipulated receive divine solution receive divine solution somebody is not praying very well receive divine solution anything in my life that the enemy has manipulated receive divine solution in the name of Jesus receive divine solution receive divine solution by the power of God receive divine solution Receive it, 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 receive it in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Okay, the last prayer. I don't know what the prayer is meant for, but I I feel very strong in my spirit that somebody needs to pray it. You will shout. Powers! That is terrorizing me. Can you shout it loud and clear? Somebody you can shout more than that. I take authority over you. Every problem that is terrorizing me, I take authority over you. Every situation that is terrorizing me, I take authority over you. Die! Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Power that is terrorizing me, situation and problem that is terrorizing me, I take authority over you and I command you to die by the power of God. I command you to die by the power of God. I command you to die by the power of God. Be buried. Be buried. Be buried. Be buried. Somebody pray. Pray in the spirit. Pray very well. I take authority over you. I take authority over you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I decree by the authority of God as we have prayed. It is done. We will see the glory of God. Beginning from today, we will begin to see authority of God manifesting in our life. When we exercise our authority, there will be manifestation. There will be manifestation in the name of Jesus. Thank you Lord because I've done it. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Shout hallelujah. You may please be seated just for a few minutes. I'm very, very, very glad to see every one of us today. The Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. If I say an amen, say better amen. I just want to remind us of our special program, program that is coming. On the 7th to 8th of July, we'll be having a special anointing program in this place. So please make sure you make yourself available for the program on the 6th, on the 7th to 8th of July. It's a divinely instructed prayer program. It is very important for every one of us to be a partakers of that program. So we are hoping that very soon the flyers of the program will be available for publicity. 
every Tuesday we used to have VG in this place. A very powerful VG. God has been manifesting his power in our midst. We start by 11 p.m. and we close very early because of those who are going to their place of work and the students among us. So we close very early by three or before three. So do your best and make yourself available for this wonderful program. Every Friday like this by 4.30 we always have a Bible study. Do your, do your best to make sure next week, next week Friday you are available for it. Tomorrow should be a charity feast but it won't hold. It won't hold. It will not hold. Let us take note of that and let us tell others that are not aware of that. The Lord will bless us in the name of Jesus. And then every Thursday we used to have a special program, special prayer program online. It's just a one hour prayer program on Facebook, Land of Truth TV on Facebook. If you want to, it's only on Facebook. So we really stream the Thursday prayer meeting on YouTube. Of course, we are planning to make it Facebook and YouTube. But we will let you know whenever we want to start that. But for now, it's only on Facebook. Land of Truth TV. Just search it all. Search Emmanuel Samsi Jude on Facebook. Then follow the account. Then you'll be receiving notification anytime we are doing any of our live program. And the Lord is going to bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Let us stand up. We want to share the grace. Let us stand up. We want to share the grace. Let us share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to shout three powerful hallelujah to the glory of God. Shout three powerful hallelujah.